In this video, we're going to talk about what's called the squeeze, or sometimes called the sandwich theorem. And this is another, this theorem lets us evaluate limits at a certain point. So whenever you're dealing with a mathematical theorem, there's always two pieces. There's a premise, or an if statement, and there's a conclusion, or a then statement. So the if statement is what you have to make sure is true before you can use the theorem. This theorem says that if you have three functions, and g of x is less than or equal to f of x, which is less than or equal to h of x, around some x value c. So basically you have to have this f function sandwiched between g and h at least around um, the function value x equals c. And if you know that the limit as x approaches c of g of x equals a limit, which is equal to the limit as x approaches c of h of x. So if the limits of the two outside functions are the same, here's our conclusion. I keep it in black. Then the limit as x approaches c of f of x is also equal to that same limit value. Let me show you what that looks like graphically. So let's say we've got a graph. Let's make the graph that we care about um, this blue graph. And let's say we're trying to find the limit at this point x equals c. And we'll let this blue function be f of x. What this theorem says is that if you can find a, a function that's always on top of f and always beneath f. So like let's say we have um, our function, we'll let this one up here be g of x. Oh, sorry, that would be above, so that would be h of x. And then we have another function that's down here beneath it that's always at g of x. If you'll notice, all those functions at c have the same limit. So what it means is that if you can't find the limit of your blue function, f of x, if you can just prove that you've got an h of x and a g of x that kind of sandwich in that function, then you can use that to find the, the, the limit of f of x. Let me show you when this is used. There's really two scenarios when we're going to use the sandwich theorem. I'll show you the most common first. Actually, I'll show you the easiest one first. So it could, a problem could say, let um, f of x be between g of x and h of x. And it could just tell you that this inequality holds. Okay. And then it might say, if you've got um, this function f of x sandwiched between h of x and g of x, and it wants you to find the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x. Okay. Now the problem would also have to tell you something like and limit as x approaches 3 of h of x is equal to 2 and the limit as x approaches 3 of g of x is equal to 2. So if I know that f of x is sandwiched, sandwiched between h of x and g of x, and both of those limits are the same number, or 2, then I know that the limit of f of x is equal to 2 as well. Okay. Let me show you the most frequent use of this theorem. Most frequently, you are going to see the sandwich or squeeze theorem used when you're dealing with sine and cosine and other trig functions. So let's say, I'll put this problem in black. This is what the book would tell you or what the question would ask. Find the limit so we're finding the limit as x approaches 0 of x sine of 1 over x. That's what the question is and then we are going to uh, show how we can use the sandwich theorem to, to solve that. So first let's just notice that you can't use direct substitution. 
So lots of times, um, well, the first thing we should always try is try direct substitution. Well, we run into a problem here because we get 0 times the sine of 1 over 0. Now, lots of people want to say, well, that's just equal to 0 because you're multiplying by 0. Um, this is undefined because you still have a 0 of a denominator over here. So we can't do direct substitution. And it's also pretty tricky to use some of our other rearranging um, and trick identities to work through this. So what we're going to do is we are going to find an h of x and a g of x that sandwich our function between them. And I like to start with just the sine of x. So I'm going to kind of ignore the x that's in front of the sine of x for now. So I know that the sine of 1 over x is always between 1 and negative 1. That is the domain, or that, sorry, that's the range of the sine function. So if I know that's true, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start adjusting this middle function to match what I started with. So I'm going to multiply this whole inequality by x. So then that turns into negative x is less than or equal to x sine of 1 over x, which is less than or equal to x. Let me fix that less than or equal to sign. It's kind of like a wonky. So now you'll notice that I have my function right here, x sine of 1 over x, and it's sandwiched between two other functions. h of x is negative x, and g of x is x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the limits of both of my outside functions. This is where it's important that you have to use your limit notation correctly. So you need to show that the limit as x approaches 0 of negative x is equal to the limit as x approaches 0 of x. Now the nice thing about these two functions is you can do direct substitution. So the first limit is just equal to 0. Second limit is equal to 0. So because those two outside functions um, give you the same limit at x equals 0, you can say then, or let me show you a fun math abbreviation, if you use three dots like this, that means therefore, the limit as x approaches 0 of x sine of 1 over x is equal to 0. Then that would be my answer. Okay. An important thing before I end this video, I just want to show you guys some really important pieces of your work that you're going to need to show on all homework tests and especially on the AP exam. If you're going to use something like the sandwich theorem or the squeeze theorem, you want to make sure you state it. So that's one thing that I failed to do. So I want to say here, I know this limit because I used the squeeze theorem or the sandwich theorem. And then if you're going to use the squeeze theorem, you have to show that you fulfilled both of these if statements. So you're going to want to be very clear and deliberate in showing this line, that you showed that the function is bound between two other functions, and that you showed both of those limits are equal. If you don't show those and you just say what the limit is, you're going to get like one out of, I don't know, 10 points or something on a problem like this on the AP exam. So make sure that you're being really deliberate about showing the different pieces of the if statements of the theorem.